This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2000. Working out shouldn't hurt, and your diet shouldn't be miserable, by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday and welcome back to episode 2000 of Optimal Health Daily. I've only reached 2000 episodes because of you, so thank you so much for being a listener of this podcast. Now, if you're new here, this is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web kind of like an ongoing audiobook, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. And with that, let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. Working out shouldn't hurt, and your diet shouldn't be miserable, by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. How you eat and move your body should make you feel good about yourself and make your life better. Fitness should not cause pain, and your diet shouldn't rule your life. Seriously, what the heck going on? It seems like more than ever I hear people talk about how brutally sore they are and how everything hurts. Despite causing pain, people continue to perform workouts that hurt. Some people are treating pain like it's a badge of honor. It almost killed me, and it hurts to walk, but I did it. I can't believe this actually needs to be said. Your workouts should not hurt. They should not cause you pain. If you're constantly in pain from your workouts, something is wrong and needs to be addressed immediately. I've had this same conversation with several folks over the years, especially when I worked in a commercial gym. My shoulder's killing me. Every time I bench press, it gets worse. Any ideas on what I should do? Well, since you asked, first, you need to stop performing the barbell bench press. Second, no. Excuse me? No, I'm not going to stop benching. Well then, there's nothing else I can really say other than to enjoy your future rotator cuff surgery. In this example, the problem is somewhat easy to solve. Replace an exercise that causes pain, the bench press, with a similar movement that can be done pain-free. For many in this example, That would be a dumbbell bench press variation, or even a barbell bench press at a low incline. Combine that exercise swap with an increase in upper back work, like face pulls, rows, band pull-aparts, and so on, and those sore shoulders may start to feel a lot better. I've seen it work numerous times. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. For some, though, the story has been different, and oftentimes it went something like this. Nia. I'm exhausted all the time, and I'm starting to have constant aches in my knees and back. Well, what do you do in a typical week? I strength train three days per week. I do at least an hour of cardio most days. I do yoga and a couple other group classes. Oh, and I perform high-intensity intervals a few times per week too. And I'm training for a Spartan race. And I'm considering competing in a powerlifting meet because I've heard they're really fun trying to do everything simultaneously. Some of us fall into the trap of thinking if some, in this case exercise, is good, then more must be better. So we add an extra workout, or five, to our weekly routine. Soon, after drastically increasing the physical activity, things hurt that didn't hurt before. Energy levels steadily decline. Motivation that was once abundant wanes. The solution is fairly simple. Choose the main thing you want to achieve and then scale back the rest. For example, if you like to compete in bike races, triathlons, or any other competitive activity, that should be your main focus. Everything else should complement that goal, not take away from it. In this example, I usually suggest scaling back strength training to two workouts per week via minimalist workouts, of course. This way, you still reap the many benefits without burning out. Even if you don't compete in events, you still need to prioritize your activities, and they can change over time. You can't lift weights five times per week, do hours of cardio, take group classes, and do high-intensity interval training frequently and expect to survive for very long. Something has to give. If you don't choose wisely, your body will force you to with acute and eventually chronic injuries. This is why when people email me saying their goal is to lose fat, but get strong, build some muscle, and improve their conditioning, I tell them to pick one for at least a few months. 
and then move on to another goal. What is the main thing you want to accomplish? Perhaps you want to lose fat. Focus on losing fat. Once you achieve that goal, then move on to something else, like getting stronger. You can do anything, but you can't do everything all at once. To summarize this section, one, working out should not hurt. If an exercise causes pain, stop. Check your form. If you're certain you're doing it correctly, but still experience pain, use an alternate exercise. For example, if barbell back squats bother your back, try goblet squats or barbell front squats. And resist the temptation to focus on the exercises you can't do. Focus solely on those you can do. Two, have one priority at a time. Choose your main goal and stick to it. You can switch to a different one later. Organize your routine accordingly and make sure additional components complement your goal and don't take away from it. Three, you don't have to finish every workout exhausted. Your workouts can actually make you feel good and more energized than when you began. It's my belief that most of the time, they should. And four, working out is not punishment. Never forget this. A workout should never be done because you ate too much or you hate how you look. Now that we've covered why working out shouldn't cause pain, let's move on to diet. Your diet shouldn't be miserable. Unless you're competing in some type of physique competition that demands very low levels of body fat, you likely don't need some complex calorie counting, food weighing, huge list of foods to avoid at all costs type of diet. Personally, I'm partial to the simple guide to eating healthy style of eating. The guidelines are simple and there are no foods you have to avoid. This means no obsessing, no guilt, and no shame. You should follow an eating style that you can sustain long term. This is why I'm not a fan of typical fad diets because most people can't commit to them long term. Want to know if you should follow that new diet or the simple guide to eating healthy that I mentioned? Answer this question. This new eating style or diet you're planning to try, will you be able to follow it six months from now? How about one year from now? If the answer is not yes, then don't do it. Look for something else. Let's wrap up this section with a public service announcement. We are told by magazines and media that we should always be on a diet, that we should always look for tips that trick us into eating less, that we should feel guilty when we indulge in our favorite foods, that we should avoid entire food groups, that we should only eat salad when we go out to dinner. And all of that is a huge, steaming, fresh pile of swarmed by flies. And you should treat that nonsense like too. Avoid it at all costs. Plug your nose and run the other direction. You don't have to spend your life diet hopping. You don't need to ask permission to eat anything. You don't have to try the latest fad diet because your friend is doing it. You don't have to explain why you eat or don't eat certain foods. Get off the diet roller coaster and find some simple, sustainable, enjoyable eating guidelines you can follow long term. Choose to be more, never less. One more thing. If you truly have unexplained weight gain, go see your doctor. Get off the internet. Don't read a diet book. Don't talk to a personal trainer. Go see a medical professional. Let's end this madness. Working out should not hurt. If an exercise causes pain or your workouts are leaving you drained of energy, change things immediately. Your diet should not be a miserable endeavor. Stop diet hopping and adopt simple guidelines. And let's add one final thing. Your actions, like how you eat and choose to move your body, should never be driven by guilt and shame. You simply can't become the best version of yourself if you're constantly tearing yourself down. You just listened to the post titled, Working Out Shouldn't Hurt and Your Diet Shouldn't Be Miserable by Nia Shanks of niashanks.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. To further Nia's point, my right knee was hurting the other day. It felt a bit sore after performing some new exercises I was trying. I took a day off and planned to perform some cardio the following day. But when I was performing my cardio warm-up, I found my knee was still feeling a little sore. So I stopped my planned cardio workout 
and instead performed an upper body workout to give my knee a complete rest. I took another day off after my upper body workout. So by the time I was ready to test my knee again, the pain was gone. It took less than a week, luckily, for the pain to disappear. But had I tried to push through the pain and finish that planned workout where I was gonna work my legs, I'm not so sure the recovery would have gone as smoothly. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 2000 of Optimal Health Daily. I wouldn't have made it this far without you and your support. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. That's one of the best ways to keep this show going. All right, I hope you have a great start to your week and I'll be back here tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.